Okay, everybody, welcome to the USA Softball Development Series. This is a series of 10 topics aired bi-weekly with the goal to inform all levels of softball in a new and uh, innovative way. Uh, obviously, a pandemic is happening. We are stuck on our computers. Zoom is our best friend. Facebook is our best friend. And uh, we love technology uh, for our ability to just connect with other people that are so influential in our sport. Um, we, we're so excited to have you here today. I am your host, Lauren Chamberlain. I am a former professional softball player, a uh, former member of Team USA, and now turned host and overall softball advocate for, for the game. So I'm very excited to be joining you guys and hosting this series. Um, we have a, an amazing episode today. This is a topic that is close to my heart, staying involved in the game. Right, there are so many opportunities that happen on the other side of playing that we are um, wanting to share with you guys. We have a representative from every aspect of softball here with us today. Um, these people are walking examples of what it looks like to stay involved in high capacity, in a meaningful capacity uh, in the sport of softball. So I am going to introduce this star-studded panel of superstars. You guys are just amazing. I've, I've worked with some of you guys closely, so I'm excited for this full circle moment. and. Uh, you know, the chance to dive into your stories and hear more about you guys. So I'm going to introduce our panel here uh, to start from Gadsden, Alabama, started umpiring ASA softball in 1979, started as a slow pitch umpire, but transitioned into fast pitch, worked the border battle in slow pitch and Olympic tour stops in fast pitch and a whopping 32 ASA USA uh, national championships. He is on the national umpire staff as deputy director of umpires for the Southern Territory, Steve Nelson. We give a virtual clap for you, Steve. Hey. Thank you, Lauren. Yes, of course. Next up, we have USA Softball Managing Director of Development, former member of Team USA, University of Oklahoma alumni, Boomer Sooner Baby, and 2013 national champion, Destiny Martinez. Woo! <laughs> Next up, USA Softball stand beside her tour digital media. This is us softball media director, Athletes Unlimited photographer and social media, and NFCA photographer and videographer, Jade Hewitt. Thank you, Jade. Uh -huh. And last but certainly not least, from Southern California, an All-American at Oregon, six-time national team member, coached for two years at Biola and one year at the University of Oklahoma. Like, we got to stick together. That's why we picked you on this panel. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Co-founder of Church on the Dirt, Janie Reed. Hey, guys. Awesome. So, obviously, we have an incredible panel. We try to hit all aspects so that you guys can hear all the information. I know, you know, tuning in with us today, we have players, coaches, former coaches, uh, umpires. We have pretty much all aspects of softball. So to start, I want you guys to briefly each walk me through your roles at your individual organizations. Janie, we'll start with you. Yeah, so I co-founded Church on the Dirt. Um, my co other co-founder um, was my boss at Biola, actually, she's the head coach. Um, now uh, she lives in San Antonio and has since left Biola, but I coached under her and I kind of had um, just this idea of bringing church to where people already were on the weekends, um, which was at the softball field, especially in Southern California. There's a showcase going on every weekend. And um, we were actually trying to figure out how to get more girls to come to camp um, and I was like, why don't we go to them instead of expecting people to come to us? And so that's when the idea of Church on the Dirt was born. And um, Lori, my co-founder, she is just amazing at putting things into action. And so um, I kind of cover all of the creative stuff, all of the social media stuff. And um, then we also have, you know, some of the USA girls are fellow contributors and we create um, digital media, uh, we have um, a devotional journal, um, and then we also go out to tournaments. And so I'm kind of very hands-on and my co-founder Lori is really uh, just the one that gets you know the business going and really puts stuff into action. Awesome, and for those of you that have not uh, checked Church on the Dirt out, I highly suggest it uh, as a former uh, player with Janie just getting to know her. Her story is awesome. She's an amazing person. So Janie, we're, we're so excited to have you. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, Jade, you'll, you'll go next. Tell us what you got going on. Um, well, I, I guess underneath everything is really just Jade Hewitt Media is, is kind of the, the base. And then I'm very uh, lucky and blessed to work with uh, a bunch of organizations 
USA being obviously the, the most proud I've ever been to wear something uh, on my shirt. Uh, so when I was working with USA, it's with um, photo and video on the Stand Beside Her tour uh, presented by MLB, um, working a little bit with graphics and stuff like that, but a uh, really awesome communications team at USA. Uh, with NFCA, it's videos and photos every year at convention. Uh, and again, they're an, an amazing staff. Uh, with This Is Us softball, doing kind of a little bit of everything, videos, uh, photography, graphics, web design, social media. Um, and then now, most recently with Athletes Unlimited, which I'm, I'm sure a lot of people have, have heard how incredible uh, Athletes Unlimited is. So doing photography and uh, social media for them and really just trying to trying to be involved in softball and anywhere someone will take me so that's awesome and if you guys that are watching want to meet a true softball advocate jade hewitt is your girl she is everywhere and honestly we are truly blessed as fans of softball to see your content you you create incredible content as a former athlete we appreciate what you do so very exciting stuff uh steve go for it what do you got Okay, and now currently I'm the Deputy Director of Umpiring for USA Softball, representing the Southern Territory, uh, which stretches from uh, South Carolina to Arkansas, Louisiana, and everything in between. I, uh, I'm primarily responsible for training umpires either locally in their local associations or through our uh, national umpire schools and camps. Also, I administrate the program through being UIC at uh, our various national championships. And uh, I also participate in maintaining and updating the rule book annually and our umpire manual. So in, in my role as deputy, I'm all things in umpiring and, and, and love every bit of that. Steve, we can't play without you, right? Everybody on this panel appreciates what umpires do. So thank you so much for being on the call with us. Uh, Destiny, tell us about your role at USA Softball. Yeah, um, so I am now the Director of Development for USA Softball. Um, this position actually just started in January. Um, and one of my main focuses is to figure out, kind of understand the platform of softball and um, understand where it does and does not exist and how we can get it into these places that don't have softball currently. Um, another one of my main focuses is to provide more resources. So. I'm working on usasoftballeducation.com and providing some drills, some content um, from our current Olympic roster, um, as, as well as former players, um, just providing some content that um, does not currently exist to everybody and anybody. So as the NGB, we want to provide some content um, for everybody. And then another main responsibility that I have is working with Major League Baseball and our partnership with them on providing more opportunities to inner city and underserved athletes, um, as well as the play ball initiative, um, and just getting people introduced to our sports. So um, we want it to grow, we want it to grow at all levels, um, but one main thing that we want to focus on together, um, USA Softball and Major League Baseball, is just providing the opportunity to kids. Um, so just getting um, more people involved in our game and helping it grow any way we can. So. And as Destiny's, one of Destiny's really good friends, we're close friends, uh, I see what she does on the back end and it's so appreciated. Uh, the dirty work that goes into softball, you guys, as, a, as athletes, the ones that are tuning in with us today, you don't always see it, right? You've got your blinders on and you're just showing up to the field to play softball, but there's so many things in the work behind the scenes that make this thing pop. So Destiny, you're appreciated. Uh, we're going to go into some individual questions for you guys. Jade, we're going to start with you. Um, tell us about the process of bringing both of your passions uh, together in one to form a career. Well, I guess I was pretty, pretty fortunate to have figured out what I wanted to do at a relatively young age. Uh, I think the first movie I shot, I was 11 and it was with a bunch of the guys in my neighborhood. We ran around with my dad's VHS tape, um, making silly stuff. And I remember in junior high doing a project on what you wanted to be when you grew up and it was a photographer. Uh, so I knew then that I was, I really liked cameras uh, and I really liked creating things. Um, and then probably, uh, I know like all of you guys and like a lot of people I'm sure watching, you know, I started playing t-ball when I was four and travel ball and, and high school and all that kind of stuff. So I, I knew what I liked. Um, I knew what I was good at. That's kind of it. Um, those two things. Um, 
And so I've, I've just shot a whole bunch of sh silly stuff in, in junior high and high school, just getting familiar with having a camera and, uh, you know, telling stories. And then my senior year of high school was kind of a light bulb moment where it was like, oh, wait, I can put these things together and uh, combine softball and my love for shooting. Um, so I started making recruiting videos for high school athletes that wanted to play in college. And that kind of just got me moving. I'm sure if, if you were to go pull up those videos now on the internet, I would cringe because that was a very long time ago. Um, but I, I, started, I started then and, and I worked through college and I played ball as well. So I was always at the field and would convince my coach to let me bring the camera sometimes and, uh, and then eventually got into the, the, the pro league. So um, I also knew kind of in high school slash college, you know, I was not division one talent. I was not national team talent. Um, I was not, I didn't have the speed of Janie Reed or the, the home run power of Lauren Chamberlain, sadly. Um, so I knew I wasn't going to go pro or, or my career was going to end after my senior year of college. So, um, you know, I knew where I could attempt to try and make my mark on the sport. And uh, yeah, it's with, it's with a camera in my hands. Unfortunately, it's not with a bat in my hands. <laughs> well, I, I think about it from just being a female athlete. And when you think about media, we haven't always had like that top tier representation of what we're capable of through the lens, right? There wasn't the cool, edgy um, photographer that could push out content that was legit like the men. I, I, re I really truly remember thinking, wow, like the attention that they gave to these, these NFL players or these MLB guys, it all looks so cool. And then along came, comes Jade Hewitt, you know, giving us really cool content. So how, how do you tell somebody that says, well, you know, I don't really see something in my sights. I don't see a position that I want to get uh what's your advice for those people about kind of creating your own lane yeah that's that's an awesome question um i've in talking with some younger girls they you know they're like i like playing or you know maybe i could be a coach but what they're good at is not necessarily something that you would immediately think softball um so you know my advice to those girls um is just to forge and make your own path i mean Look at look at the people on this panel. You know, a lot of a lot of what Lauren Chamberlain's doing was not really a thing in softball until she came strolling through. And Janie founded Church on the Dirt from thin air. So you know, it's a great example to me. Is is people? You know, a girl might say, "I'm I'm really good with my hands. I really like to build, or I really I really like engineering, and I want to stay in the sport." But how do I do that? And it's well, we've got back companies, we've got glove companies, we've got equipment manufacturers, you know, you can leave your mark, you can forge your own path, um, you know, go, go work at somewhere like that, or, you know, maybe someone's really, really great at design, or they like fashion, um, they like the visual of all of that, how do I stay in the game with that kind of random skill set, because that's what I think of, I'm like, what I do just to me is not a coach, I'm not a player, it's just kind of a random thing, so being able to just work really hard and just make your own path and really create that opportunity. You know, there's, in my mind, there's not really a, an interest out there that you can't translate to softball, maybe like marine biology or something. But other than <laughs> that, I feel like you can, you can make what you love work in the softball world if you just work really hard at it. And I bet you there's somebody on this call right now that's thinking, I want to be the next Jade Hewitt working. Yeah, for I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. It's a great, it's a great thing. You're, you're, you're forging the way for a lot of people. So kudos to you. Hats off to you. Uh, Janie, we're going to switch gears and come over to you. Talk about faith and what it played, uh, the role that it played in your career and why you decided to, to form Church on the Dirt. Yeah. Um, my faith has always been a part of my life, but I think, you know, as I started to get recruited and went to Oregon, it kind of got lower and lower on my priority totem pole. Um, just because I was focused on softball and making, you know, a career for myself. And I realized in college, um, because I had to have shoulder surgery, so I was taken out of the, away from the game for a summer and really had to ask myself, who am I without softball? And, um, and through that, I really came back to my faith, grew in my faith, 
And then I realized so many other girls go through this, um, whether it's at the travel ball level, college level. I knew a lot of girls that really struggled graduating from college and either stepping away from softball or even going into the pro league and just having a different way of life and not really knowing how to adjust, you know, only playing in the summer and what are you going to do for the rest of the year? And so I just really had a passion for sharing what I felt like God had done in my life and um, really gave me an identity outside of softball. And I still struggle with it. You know, it's an everyday thing. I, I've never talked to an athlete, a pro athlete, especially that's like, oh yeah, I found my identity in God and I never struggle again. You know, I think it's a daily struggle because you're passionate about something, you're, give, you're putting in so much work and effort into something. And so that's where I really felt like I wanted to start um, a ministry specifically for the softball community um, because I know that baseball has baseball chapel and they have other ministries and I think other sports have other ministries but I didn't know um, of any specifically to softball and just the travel ball lifestyle and um, how crazy that can be especially in Southern California and really wanting to serve that community and knowing that they were really struggling and suffering and honestly right when we started um, one of the Batbuster girls had taken her own life. And it really just, I think, lit a fire in all of us. Um, because, you know, I don't know exactly her story or what it was, but um, there was um, some things that came out that, you know, she was just struggling with the pressure of comparing herself to other people and looking at other people's stories or, you know, wanting to please her coach, whatever it was, you know, it just kind of lit a fire in us that there is a need in the softball community um, to show girls like your loves not because of what you do on the field. Um, your worth isn't dependent on your successes or failures or anything like that. And just really our hearts breaking for um, those girls and women and even families that maybe are struggling in travel ball, college, whatever stage they may be at. Um, and so I think that's really what solidified us going after um, that and um, it's been I think like close to three years of it and so it's been really awesome to see it grow and and develop. Yeah do you have a mentor in your life that has helped you whether it's you know the business side of this or even just the 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 message behind it Who, who's important in your life that's helped you with this side of things? Yeah, Lori Coleman, who is um, my co-founder, she's been a mentor to me ever since I coached under her at Biola. And um, I really hadn't had a mentor before that and was trying to grow in my faith by myself. And I've always been kind of a independent, don't want to be vulnerable with other people type of person. And so I thought I could do my faith on my own too. And having her in my life and realizing like healing comes when we open up with each other and um, growth comes from that, from transparent relationships. And so she's been a huge mentor for me. Um, she's been a business owner. She's been a coach. You know, she's done so many things that I hope to do. And she's really um, been the driving force behind it. Because I think, you know, when we're young, we have a lot of really good ideas. We don't always know how to put those into action right. and create, you know, something sustainable. And so She's just been huge in, um, in just being a great friend and, and mentor to me. Awesome. That's a great story. Steve, we're heading over to you now. Uh, at what point did you say, I want to be an umpire? What, talk about that decision. Well, uh, you know, unlike you girls who, who have the opportunity to start out in softball, typically the guys, we always start in baseball and then move over to softball after our, either our college or high school career ends. And I, I was the same way. I uh, I was playing high school baseball, and our season, in my senior year, our season ended on the first Saturday of May. The second Saturday of May, not knowing what to do, uh, I was fortunate in that I had a junior high school teacher who was an ASA umpire call me and said, uh, listen, my partner's not going to make it tonight. Why don't you come out and call games with me? I took him up on the opportunity. And that night, the first game I called, I was in love with umpiring and have been there for 42 years since. Uh, did not give umpiring a lot of thought prior to that day. But uh, the experience of that day and the experiences I've, ex I've, I've gained uh, all throughout, uh, I can't imagine what my life would be like 
well without the umpiring aspect to it. Uh, I've, it's, it's, I've had a great run as an umpire. Uh, listening to, to, to you girls, how, how you played uh, travel ball through college. Uh, uh, same way I, I started out doing rec leagues and then got advancing to tournaments and whatnot. And has been fortunate uh, and it called the highest levels of slow pitch and called a pretty high level of fast pitch in calling our tour stops along the way. So I've been exposed to many great athletes, many seeing many great players, many great plays. And as as you know, as you get older All the all the fun things of, of umpiring, but just on the other side of the fence, uh, with a polo shirt on instead of an umpire uniform. But uh, I can't I can't express enough what softball has done done for me personally and all the experiences I've had with it. Amazing. Do you okay? So now that you're on the other side of it, do you feel like you like umpiring or directing umpires? What what do you like better? What What's your I, 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 I still like umpiring. When I'm sitting in the stands evaluating umpires or being UIC at a championship, I can't control what's going on. All I can do is watch and observe and hope they do the best thing that they can do. But as an umpire, I'm, I'm in control of what's going on in that ball game. Gotcha. All right, next up, we're going to Destiny. Can you share your journey from playing to becoming the director of development? Um, talk about how you've managed to make that career in that position. Yeah, so um, I guess I stopped playing in 2014. Um, the last summer I played with Team USA was 2014. And um, that's when I kind of had to make the decision of, do I want to pursue a career in playing or um, what else is there? And at that point in my life, I was, I was ready to kind of just figure out another um, road, hang up the cleats and figure something else out. I um, actually had dreams of being like in CSI and um, wanted to do some criminology type stuff um, and the route that I had planned to take was you'd have to serve on the um, out on the field as an officer in Oklahoma City for three years at least and so um, in between that time I was looking for a job um, before the next place academy and I I take my relationships very um, seriously. So I called everybody that had been a part of Team USA. I thank them for everything they did. Um, and so when I got on the phone with Craig, who's now our CEO, uh, or he was a CEO at that time too, um, I thanked him and I just said, you know, I've, I've decided to go a different route with my life and thank you for all the time and opportunities with Team USA, but um, I'm going to wait out a career and wait for the next police academy. Um, and he said, okay, well, in between that time, if you need anything, let us know. Um, they, USA Softball did take interns. Um, and over summer, the, there's so many events. We, at that time, before we went under construction, we were running like 30 to 40 events a summer. Um, and so I took him up on the offer. I said, you know, I have, I'm waiting for this um, academy and, and I need something else to do, um, just to make a little bit more money, make ends meet get my bills paid. Um, I was actually still finishing school. I, it took me four and a half years to finish. So um, in between that time, I decided to come here and um, I was inputting some data. There's a lot of stuff that goes into USA softball. There's so much that I was just unaware of. Um, I grew up playing ASA and I, I knew that it existed, but I had no clue what it all entailed. Um, so when I got here and they're like, yeah, we need you to put data. We need you to I just run events and all this stuff. I was like, what is that? Like, so you, there's an office, like you go to like, what? And so when I finally came in, um, there were so many responsibilities and I actually just fell in love with the game all over again, just, just the backside of it. Um, and so running events um, out at the stadium, it was like, okay, there are people that have to unlock all the gates. There are people that have to turn on the lights. There are people that have to staff 
um, concession workers. There are people that have to sell merchandise and order merchandise and order awards and um, get the umpire set, the hospitality, t the hospitality tents, um, build the schedule, communicate with the coaches, collect entry fees. There's just so much. There's tickets. There's, there's so much that I had no idea um, as to where I would just show up and play. Um, so I fell in love with a whole different side of the game. And so when that police academy came, I was not interested. I, I knew that I wanted to be with USA Softball to grow and learn um, and just continue to find a career. Um, so at that time when I first got here, there was a woman above me who, um, she was actually the director of ops. Her name was Casey Bowles. She was the director of ops for um, OU when I played there. So I had a good relationship with her and um, she actually ended up uh, getting pregnant, having the most beautiful twins, um, but she knew she wasn't going to come back. So she kind of gave me this warning of, hey, you know, there, there could be a manager spot. So I went from an intern kind of part-timer to a coordinator to a manager um, of events. And so getting to be on the back end of the World Series and just there's so much that goes into it that I truly did just fall in love all over again. Um, and then now as the director of development, this is a new position that um, was established. Uh, we partnered with Major League Baseball in 2016 for the Play Ball Initiative. Um, and that is something that it, it was a whole other part of softball that I never was introduced to. Um, I was very fortunate to get to play at a very top level travel ball organization. And there's a whole side of the game that Major League Baseball fully supports and is trying to improve in its inner cities underserved um, the population of softball, they, they want to help expand and help them grow. Um, and so when our partnership launched, I fell in love again with a whole different side that I had never experienced before. Um, and so with that partnership, um, starting in 2016, last year, and um, kind of just propose that there's a, there be a position where I can fully help and um, expand with all of our associations. USA Softball has 67 different associations nationwide who um, I feel like if I'm more hands-on with and better understand how softball works in each area, we can target more inner cities and get kids to play the game. Um, so it's just a whole different level of um, softball again that I fell in love with. So um, that's kind of characteristics that are developed within playing softball, right? Like you played softball, you played your sport, you developed these kind of intangibles that were, um, that are now kind of coming in business and they're allowing you to form these new positions. What have you learned from softball that has allowed you to be where you are now? Yeah. Um, I think just, just kind of like the go getter type drive, um, that was instilled in me from the time I started with Marty Tyson as my coach to going to play for Patty Gasso playing for Team USA, I mean, all of the coaches, there, there's just an expectation and there's there's drive that um, they all pull it out, out of you in different ways, but it's instilled in you. Um, and so when I see an open opportunity or something that can kind of connect, I have no problem um, bringing it to their attention or whoever, I mean, in, in this situation, I had to go to my higher ups and just saying, hey, this is how it can work. This is how I envision it. And this is how I'm going to work for it. Um, so I think just I, just from a young age, instilling some drive into uh, me, just different ways from all of my coaches and my parents and um, just being able to have some drive and go get what you what you want, what you envision and, and how you can do it. Um, in my situation, it had to be put on paper to better explain. And so that's what I did. Um, it really it, it took a while. It took me time to figure out exactly the steps of what I would like to do, how I can see it happen. Um, and then it also takes help. It's, it's not going to be a one person deal. Uh, Major League Baseball is fully um, there to support. Everybody in this office is fully on board to help me with, with anything. Um, and I think that's what it, what it takes too is teamwork. Um, so just being in softball, having teammates, knowing how to work with teammates and knowing how to communicate 
those are the two things that I think just being a part of softball and playing and being part of a team um, every year since I was four, um, I think that's really played a large role in where I'm at today. Yeah, there are overwhelming statistics about women that have played sports that are dominating in business. So I think that you're a perfect uh, example of that. Jade, I want to hear about your favorite. This is a personal question coming from me. Who is like your favorite athlete, female athlete to shoot? Or what was your favorite event that you captured? Like, do you have this like thing burned in your mind that you're just like, oh my God, I, I nailed that shot, you know? Um, man, that's quite the question. Um, <laughs> Answer this so, correctly or I will X you out. No, I'm just right. kidding. <laughs> um, no, actually, it, it's really funny because because I, I, I've been asked that question before. And to me, every single player is so unbelievably different. And so you get different things with different players. So like, Lauren, in your case – my favorite time to photograph you is like pre-pitch slash like when the pitch is on the way because mm -hmm. you have your load and your eyes get really big and you yeah. have a really <laughs> animated face which captures so well on camera. And so like, I love that about you. When Janie's playing, Janie has this insane ability to just remain so calm. It's like stoic. It, it's, it, it's insane. Like it's so beautiful. My me, I'm like me, like an eyes over here, lips over here. Like her face is just so nice. <laughs> and so I love getting certain shots of Janie, especially when she's running, because she looks so great when she looks so great when she's running. So I don't know if I could tell you an exact player, but I could I could do impressions of, and I could tell you what I love about each player uh, and what they bring to the table that's different. So I'm not going to give you a player, but uh, it's just because everybody is so unbelievably different. Um, my favorite event, hands down, is 2018 uh, WBSC World Championships over in Chiba. Um, I say that. I think I blacked out during that game because it was just the most unbelievable, what felt like probably three and a half hours of my life. Um, but, you know, I'm I'm down left field line and you're with all the other photographers and you're just standing there for like four hours and the game went into extras and my emotions, I don't know how the players do it, but my emotions were like this. And um, that game was just unbelievable uh, to not only to just, you know, watch if you were watching on stream, but just to be a part of. And for me, and I'm sure a lot of other photographers would say this is those type of games elevate your own photography game. Uh, you get better in those big environments where it feels like there's some pressure on, you know, when someone gets the winning hit, like you only have one shot to get that photo. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, that, that really makes you better. Um, those, just those type of environments. Uh, so I, I would say that game was, was pretty incredible uh, to be a part of for sure. I'll never forget that night. It's the whole thing is a blur, but it was amazing. Awesome. Uh, Steve, if you were to tell someone that wants to get into umpiring, what, what are their steps? If, if someone's coming to you and saying, hey, how do I get involved in this? Uh, what are you telling them? Well, I'm going to tell them to, uh, if they have USA softball in their area, ask the local umpire call in the games. Who do I, who do I contact to get involved? Uh, if that's not uh, – accessible then uh, get on our website usasoftball.com go to the umpire tab on the umpire tab they'll have a link for the national umpire staff and just contact any of us uh, we would love to get you in touch with the people in your area that can help you uh, embark on an umpiring career with usa softball awesome Janie, for those of you we've actually had some fan questions come through um about how they can access you guys uh, where, where can you direct them for Church on the Dirt information? Yeah, we, um, you can go to our website, churchonthedirt.com. And then also, um, we just got on Apple Podcasts, so you can look up our podcast nice. and subscribe to it. Yeah, we're really excited about that. Um, and then we're on Instagram a lot, so just Church on the Dirt on our Instagram. And um, if you go on Amazon, you can also search Church on the Dirt, and we have our devotional book that you can buy from Amazon. 
Um, and then we just, we try to put out a lot of digital content um, just because uh, we would love to be at tournaments all the time, but a lot of us that are involved with Church on the Dirt are still playing. And so um, until maybe we're done and we can be at more tournaments, we try to give you content so that you can, you know, invite a friend. Do you want to read this Devo with me before our game or listen to this podcast on the way to the field on Sunday morning um, so that you can just, I think, combine your faith with the game because a lot of people think you have to choose one or the other and we don't believe that you have to do that that's such an amazing thing that you guys do because I can remember I think back to when I was on Sundays you did have to choose you you couldn't go to church because you had to go to the field so I think it's awesome that you're bringing that to to the players Destiny where can people reach you Yeah, so you can um, find me at um, usasoftball.com um, on our staff directory, or I'll give you guys my email address if you have any questions, dmartinez at usasoftball.com. Um, but also visit our website, usasoftballeducation.com. Um, that is a website that we try to keep content um, from our current players, former players, um, we try to provide more information on our development events, um, play ball events. You can find a lot of resources there from True Sport. Um, the USOPC provides that to us. Um, that targets parents, coaches, um, fans, and um, yeah. So usasoftballeducation.com. Thanks. Awesome. Jade, where, where can we find you? Um, I guess j2media.com would be for me. Um, all of the wonderful organizations I work with all on their kind of separate websites. But, uh, you know, I'm like everybody else. I'm on the gram at JQ at media, uh, just tagging a lot of other people that, um, you know, I get to photograph. So. Awesome. And then Steve, is there somewhere that, that our umpires that are on here can reach out? I'm sure they know, but if we want to remind people. Yeah, just, uh, USA softball.com. And uh, there's a great umpire tab with lots of information and contact information, umpire manual information, rule book information, everything you need to know to get started in umpire. You know, we, we do have some time on our hands. I might actually check out the rule book just for fun. Yeah. I might <laughs> want to, I might want to get up on my, my rule book. Um, Lauren, can I ask you a question? Sure. So, this is fun. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, so I know everybody's got to know who Lauren Chamberlain is, but you also have a really exciting story, interesting story. I mean, you are a go-getter. Um, can we hear from you? Like, I want to hear some of your story. Yeah, sure. Um, so I went to the <laughs> University of Oklahoma, ended up getting drafted number one in 2015 to the Professional Softball League. Um, I played four years professionally and then I'm actually, I just, uh, in 2018 was my last season. So, um, it's been an interesting journey. Um, I, if any of you on here are old enough to remember Vine, that's kind of where things started. <laughs> I made stupid videos, you guys, like I was just bored in college. Destiny was probably in some of those videos. Uh, I, I really just had... Um, a big personality that I wanted to get out there and you know social media was kind of on the rise right at that time It was like the new hot thing Instagram Twitter. I think came out in 2011. I was on the national championship stage um, In 2012 so it was really right at the right time I capitalized on social media and just connecting with fans. That was always my biggest thing was to um, You know showcase my personality while forming a relationship with the people that were watching on the other side of the screen so um, that building a brand kind of happened organically. It wasn't like, oh, I'm thinking about my brand. I never really had that conversation with myself. I just wanted to stay true to myself and continue to build a fan base. Um, I actually had a, a conversation with a former sponsor that had highlighted, you know, how long can we keep your name hot? How long do you, um, how, can you ride this wave, right? Because I, especially with female athletes heading into the professional level, um, you know, unfortunately, softball professional level is not where it should be. So you drop off a bit when you're off of that stage of the Women's College World Series. It's the second most watched sporting event of the year, right? So it's quite the cliff if you don't know how to handle it um, and if you're not really prepared. So that was something my senior year that I kept in my mind was, okay, how can I capitalize on this um, quote unquote fame that you gather from the World Series and performing at the World Series um, and kind of catapult myself into a career? 
So my goal was to always love what I'm doing. Love, love, love. And I had the opportunity to play professional softball and that's, I love playing softball. So for me, it came in the form of sponsorship money um, and, and contracts in that way that was allowing me, Hey, I can actually see this as a career. Like I can, I can focus on softball, um, which I know I'm, I'm well aware that I'm extremely lucky because it is not always the case, um, across the board. Our sport is getting there. It's, it's gaining traction, especially with the help, the help of, you know, Janie and her teammates heading to the Olympics. It's huge. And, um, you see corporate America want to come in a strong behind that. So we see it moving in a positive direction, but still it was kind of that ongoing battle of how can I make this my job and my job only. Um, I know I had a mouthpiece on me, so I, I wanted to work with sponsors. Um, I grew up under my dad um, being a salesman. My mom's a CPA, but sitting in on my dad's phone calls with companies uh, that he would start with no sale. I'd say, dad, like hang up the phone. They're not going to buy this. Like they, this is embarrassing, right? Like and he's like, give me five minutes. Like I will have a sale at the end of this call. And every single time he had a sale. So I just got that kind of in my mind where I was like, man, like if you know how to do something correctly, you could really, you know, make a difference and sell people on, on products. So the salesman ish person, saleswoman person inside of me was like, man, I could kind of pair the two again, aligning passions of, I want to make people happy. I want to make companies happy. I want to make people feel good. How can I make you know money at the same time? So, um, the door opening with, you know, MLB, I now work with them as a youth ambassador, um, saying yes to opportunities that I wasn't really, um, sure I was qualified for like having my own TV show. I had no idea what exactly that looked like, but when the lights came on, I was ready to go. So I think that fearless uh, mentality of I, I'm going to fake it. So I make it. And I know I'm going to get this done. Just like, I know I'm going to get the sell um, is, is, you know, kind of taking me to this next level, but it's pretty cool. It, it only happens if I played softball. Like the fact that I was in this right. amazing sport is the only way that, you know, I am where I am today. And um, it's fun to be able to share this uh, knowledge and information with the next girls that could come up. And, you know, I know it's TikTok now. I don't know who's on, whoever's <laughs> on here, you know, doing TikTok. I feel old. That's like the first time that I actually felt old was when I was like, I have no idea what TikTok is doing. I'm like overwhelmed. Um, but yeah, it's, it's great. I'm doing so many things right now, advocating for the sport kind of, um, you know, kind of like Jade, where she's just working hands in, uh, you know, everybody's different things. That's kind of how I feel too. So you're so good at it and you're such a good ambassador for our sport. So we appreciate you. Thanks, Janie. That's so sweet. I, this is so cool to like personal note, just to be able to do host this panel and be reconnected with so many people that like were along my journey. We were just in each other's you know, mm -hmm. lives for so long. So it's fun to, to be able to do this, but thanks for asking that question, Destiny. Yeah, of course. I think it's crazy how there's so many different aspects of the game that's not really thought of until after you are done playing. I mean, Janie, I know you're still playing, but you're still able to align your passion. And I think um, just having these opportunities and talking about them, because like I said, when I, when I was playing, I had no clue or even, I didn't even think about the person who opens the gates or who's selling the tickets or who's turning on the lights, who's scheduling these umpires. I mean, I, I, again, like I fell completely in love with the other side of it. Um, but just knowing about stuff that's not really out there for you to just casually know about, um, even Steve, I don't know how many people really know about how to become an umpire or anything like that. And that's a pretty good side job, um, to, to start out with. So Steve, I don't know if you want to talk about that, but, um, it is a good opportunity. And so, I think just knowing about that and spreading awareness of all the other opportunities in softball is, is this is awesome. Yeah, it's a, it, it's, it's a great opportunity. And, you know, we've never had so many young ladies playing the game. And for most, it ends at the end of travel ball, 18 and under, or the fortunate ones get to go on and play college ball. But what, there's not a better way to stay in the game after your playing days are over than umpire. Uh, the opportunity to, to watch the game that you grew up loving, uh, even though you can't play anymore, and to, to play such an integral part in it as the umpire does play in the game, it is uh, a great opportunity. And I just wish that, that the young, all the young ladies playing would give it a thought and, and give umpiring a shot. Well, we know that the girls appreciate it. And I think we, we've talk to umpires on almost every single panel and I've learned so much about things I just didn't even 
to be honest, there were times in games where I didn't even think about y'all. Okay. And so I, I encourage, I, but, but really with like hearing your story and where you come from and your side of things, you are such a pivotal part of the game. You are, we think of you almost as another player on the field, right? That's kind of, uh, we, we just think of you as you're in your uniform and you're on the field, you're just a part of the game, but the games really don't go without you. So uh, again, we do appreciate uh, what you do. Janie, I have one final question for you. Um, everybody on this call, is aware like Tokyo 2021 like let's get this popping like what is your message to the softball community from Team USA on behalf of Team USA what can they look forward to yeah we're so excited to we, we actually had a team call yesterday um, and just kind of getting everybody's emotions out on the table because it's a lot to process we know everybody in the country right now in the world right now is going through a lot um, but we're so excited to play in 2021 and hopefully, you know, just bring life back to the sports world um, because people truly miss sports. And so um, we're hoping to get on a tour next year and schedule some games and be able to reconnect with fans, however that might look. Um, we don't necessarily know right now, but um, we know that a lot of people have been reaching out and just been so kind and you know I'm so sorry um all all the condolences but at the same time it's like okay we have more time let's focus on the positive we have more time as a team to work together to train together and um to just put on a show in Tokyo 2021. Well, we're so excited and we're all rooting for you for sure. Um, before we end, just wanted to say a quick shout out to USA Softball for providing this information and this knowledge to all aspects of the game. Thank you to those of you that have been tuned in with us uh, throughout this hour. I know it gets a little lengthy, but I was tuned in the whole time. I love hearing from you guys. Steve, Jade, Destiny, Janie, thank you guys so much for being with us. Um, for those of you that are on the call, you can find this again. It's going to be housed on usasoftballeducation.com and on USA Softball's Facebook page. So as always, support your USA women's team. Support all of USA Softball um, in general and stay tuned. We have a really awesome panel coming up about women in sports, some powerhouse women coming to the next panel. Uh, so we'll, we'll catch you guys next time. Thank you guys so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you.